biggest games, the best performances, expert analysis. You are locked on now. What's up, everybody? You are listening to Lockdown Now, local experts on the biggest stories across the NBA. I'm your host, Daniela Bruce, and thank you for making Lockdown Now your first listen every weekday. On today's show, it was a busy Sunday night across the NBA, and our Lockdown NBA hosts are here to give you everything you need to know from last night in the association. So let's get started with Sunday's biggest game. The biggest game. The Orlando Magic had yet to win this season and trailed going into the fourth again tonight in New York. But this time, Orlando flipped the script and got that first win while handing the Knicks their first loss. How did they do it? That's a question for Locked On Magic. Hey everyone, this is Philip Rossenreich, the host of Locked On Magic, and well, they did it. The Orlando Magic have their first win of the season, taking a 110-104 win over the New York Knicks at Madison Square Garden. And considering how much the Magic struggled in their first two games, this was a breath of fresh air. The big takeaway from this game is that this was really a roadmap for how the Magic want to play. After really struggling with resiliency and giving up big leads and even struggling defensively, uh, the Magic really felt like they wanted to take control of this game. They were the aggressors, or as our friend Oscar Pereja from Orlando City would say, the antagonists or the protagonists of the game. The Magic really made sure that they were playing strong, strong defense, allowing less than 50 points in the second half. They were scrambling well, they were forcing turnovers, they were getting out in transition, and they had the confidence to shoot and make shots. Cole Anthony with a near triple-double for just falling two assists short, and 16 rebounds for Cole Anthony. He had 15 points in the first quarter, 21 in the first half. Uh, Terrence Ross with all 22 points in the fourth quarter just felt like they needed to get to the fourth quarter to let the human torch be the human torch. But really, this game was about the Orlando Magic finding their formula to win. Now that they've done it once, they can do it again. The Orlando Magic back in action Monday against Miami. We'll have more on this game coming up on Locked On Magic. Until then, we'll see you next time. A big night from Julius Randle wasn't enough for the Knicks to improve to 3-0 at home, and our Lockdown Knicks host has to figure out why. Let's hear his takeaways from New York. Well, that was not fun. Uh, Alex Wolf from Locked on Knicks here. The Knicks lose 110-104 to to the Orlando Magic of all teams, a team that they just beat by 20-plus points not two nights ago. And uh, not a great time all around for the Knicks here. I mean, they they looked pretty listless. They looked like they kind of came out and took the magic for granted as an easy win on the schedule. So hopefully this, this serves as sort of a wake-up call for the Knicks. You know, even Julius Randle, despite pouring in 30 points and, you know, pushing, a, a, you know, looking like he might hit a triple-double again, shot really poorly rj barrett shot really poorly kemba walker played just okay not really that great again you know the only two guys that you could really say were standout performers in this game were derrick rose and mitchell robinson and that's not going to cut it you know if you want to be winning every single night in the nba i guess the small silver lining is that it took terrence ross scoring 22 points in the fourth quarter for the knicks to lose this team even with how bad their effort was in this game but We'll see if this serves as sort of a wake-up call for the Knicks. Certainly Tom Thibodeau is not going to be happy about how things went down in this game uh, and will probably run the guys ragged at practice. So you can hear more about it on Locked on Knicks, though, where we're covering the Knicks every single day. OKC couldn't get its first win of the 2021 season on Sunday as the Sixers came into Oklahoma City and it took a 12-point win for their first W. Locked on Thunder breaks down a second straight loss to start the season. The Oklahoma City Thunder fall in their home opener to the Philadelphia 76ers. However, unlike their first two games this year, this game was much more competitive as the Thunder only lose 115 to 103 and even had this game within eight uh, in the clutch situation of this game in the fourth quarter. The large storyline of this game, though, was SGA. SGA finally came back and, and looked like that kind of borderline all-star that he was last year. In the second half especially, he caught fire. He ends the night with 29 points, eight assists, and six rebounds. An all-around really good game from him uh, in SGA allowed Josh Giddy, the rookie and sixth overall pick, to facilitate the offense more in that first half, which allowed him to get going as well. You could tell the pairing of SGA and Josh Giddy is getting better as the games progress, and that there's really flashes where they look like two building blocks for the Oklahoma City Thunder. Hear more about that on Locked On.
Coming up, our Locked On NBA host will wrap up our look at last night's NBA action. Stay tuned. Locked On Now will be right back. Welcome back to Locked On Now. I'm your host, Daniela Bruce, and thank you for making Locked On Now your first listen every single weekday. Now, let's turn to our Locked On NBA host for a recap of the rest of the action around the Sunday NBA games. Let's go around the league. The Boston Celtics finally got into the win column for the season. Boston got a big night from Jason Tatum in Houston, but I'll let our Locked On Celtics host tell you more about that. Hey there, John Corrales here from the Locked On Celtics podcast. After Boston's 107-97 win over the Houston Rockets, their first win of the season, Ime Odoka's first win of his coaching career, and the Celtics were carried mostly by Jason Tatum, 31 points on 12 of 24 shooting, 4 of 11 from 3. He started out hot early and carried the team in a duel with Jalen Green, who was awesome and dropped 30 points. But really where the Celtics pulled away here was in the third quarter. I think it was Dennis Schroeder who really was the difference at that point, getting to the rim, getting the Rockets into the bonus, and really getting past every Rockets defender that was in front of him, showing finally some ability to get to the rim and finish that started the separation for the Celtics. They got a big contribution from Grant Williams, who was five of seven from three and continuing some really hot shooting. He's shooting over 69% from the from three this early season. So a great hot start for him. And of course, Al Horford, who despite not quite shooting well from three, did everything else and played almost a perfect game, almost exactly what the Celtics need from him. So yeah, it was a little tough. Yes, they let go of the rope towards the end, but a much needed win over a very pesky Rockets team. Now the Celtics go to Charlotte on the back-to-back. They didn't have Jalen Brown in this game with a sore left knee. Will they against Charlotte? I'm gonna talk about it all on the Locked On Celtics podcast, so make sure you're subscribed wherever you get your podcasts or on YouTube. The Rockets stuck with Boston for a while, but Houston let the game get away from them in the second half and fell to one and two on the season. Here's our Locked On Rockets with more. Welcome to the NBA, Jalen Green. What's up? Jackson Gatlin here from over at Locked On Rockets. Jalen Green dropping 30 points in just his third NBA game ever. Eight of 10 shooting from behind the three point line the Rockets rookie record holder for threes made. Now, just shattering records. Took Dwayne Wade 22 games to drop 30 in the NBA. Took LeBron 17 games. Guess who else it only took three games to drop 30 points in the NBA? Michael Jordan. The Rockets ultimately coming up short against the Boston Celtics. Turnover struggles continue, something they need to clean up moving forward. But we'll break down all the action for you over at Locked on Rockets. LeBron James and the Lakers picked up their first win of the season by taking down the previously unbeaten Grizzlies with a fourth quarter comeback. This is Andy Kamenetsky, co-host of the Locked On Lakers podcast, and the Lakers finally have their first win of the season. 121-118 over the Memphis Grizzlies. They overcame a 40-point, 10-assist night from John Morant, 18 turnovers, getting out-rebounded 49-36. It was an imperfect night to be sure, but there were also some really strong points for the Lakers as well. 28 points for Carmelo Anthony off the bench to lead all Lakers in scoring. Anthony Davis's defense was at times DPOY caliber, and we saw some interesting two-man synergy between Russell Westbrook and LeBron James. At times it worked really well, at times still very much a work in progress, but either way, it was good to see happening. A lot more to get into, so make sure you are subscribing to the Locked on Lakers YouTube channel and to make Locked on Lakers your first listen wherever you get your podcasts. And finally, the Warriors managed to stay unbeaten on Sunday night against the Kings. The offense was not supposed to be the problem for the Sacramento Kings this season, but right now it is. Hi, I'm Matt George, host of the Locked on Kings podcast. The Kings now 1-2 and on the season after falling to the Golden State Warriors. And it's not so much losing to the Warriors, it's how the Kings lost. You might look at this box score, look immediately at the turnovers and go, man, that is the main reason. And to some extent, you would be right. The Kings turning the ball over 19 times. The Warriors scored 29 points off of those 19 turnovers. But this is how the Kings lost the game. They lost this game in the first six minutes or so of the fourth quarter when both Steph Curry and Draymond Green, and for the most part, 
Andrew Wiggins were all off the floor and the Kings were still outscored 17 to 13. De'Aaron Fox was on the floor for a majority of those minutes. That absolutely can't happen. You can't be trailing by two heading into the fourth, have Steph Curry on the bench and he comes in with a bigger lead than when he exited to close that game out. That's been concerning, not as concerning though, as the Kings' fourth quarter uh, defense and offense, mainly offense as a whole, the Kings have been outscored by 30 points, 94 to 64 uh, over the course of these three games so far. We know this Kings team was bad defensively and they've had a lot of focus to improve their defense and it has improved. But offense was supposed to be all reliable for this Kings team. And right now, when it counts, it is nowhere to be seen. I'll talk about it more on tonight's Locked on Kings podcast. Hope you'll join me. That's a wrap for us. Thank you so much for making Locked On Now your first listen every day. For more on the association and your team, make your second listens the Locked On NBA podcast and your local team's Locked On podcast. I'm Daniela Bruce, and that has been Locked On Now. We'll see you soon.